Hi, and welcome back to the episode of History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow, and in today's episode, we're going to get into some uh, really fun uh, things about fan mail. So I went in the, through archives and uh, pulled a whole pile of really cool uh, you know, letters and uh, requests for you know, dubs and then fan subs and that kind of stuff from back in the day. And I'm starting to sort them out, okay, and uh, putting them into the binders and stuff like that to kind of basically, you know, to organize them by name so that uh, when certain names come up, then I might be able to look them up in, in the uh, index and find out, uh, um, you know, how I interact with, with them. But uh, as I'm going along, I'm noticing that there are you know, different categories for these uh, uh, fan mail. So I'm basically going to go through them and uh, go through each one by various different topics, okay? So before I get into some of the examples and some of the you know the, the things that are, that are in the uh, these uh, mails, uh, I want to remind people to go down below and click like and click subscribe because you know that helps out the uh, the, the YouTube algorithm as well as if you, are, you know, have some comments and, and maybe some stories of your own uh, about when you know we getting started in anime and that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, by all means, write it down below. I'd love to hear uh, your your story as well. Okay. Um, if you'd like to support me financially, uh, I do have the super thanks button uh, 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 the below so that you can click on that. As well as I do have the PayPal and Patreon uh, links there. I have a whole, uh, now up to 15 episodes of uh, subscriber specific content. Uh, and there's one now I've also uh, managed to find a whole pile of other neat things uh, that I'm going to go through. I've managed to find the uh, hentai catalog that I used to have in my store. So when people come into the store, and need, uh, you know, their hentai picks. Um, yes, I have an entire binder sorted in alphabetical order for that. So again, uh, one of the episodes I'm going to go through and go through that uh, manually and go through some of the titles and make my recommendations of some of the... Uh, again, you know, usually when people go through the binder going, hey, is this is this uh, thing really good? And it's like, yeah, of course, you know, there's, you know, what you, you know, what you got? You got, uh, you know, girls that have, uh, you know, things with, uh, you know, uh, blowing off clothes and tentacles and that kind of stuff. Yeah, what, 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 what can be there? That's, that's, all the good stuff is all in there. So, and, you know. So anyway, those type of episodes I obviously can't put on YouTube, but I can put it in the subscriber section. So definitely, uh, you want to check that out. All right. <clears throat> so today's episode is about fan mail. So basically, uh, back in the day, <clears throat> especially back in the, you know the, the time period. This is 1988 to about 1991, and into the you know in, into the 90s. Um, you know. Uh, the concept of getting mail electronically, especially you know, before the you know the, what, the internet as we know it, is really really difficult. Um, a lot of people, uh, you know, on, on the various different um, you know forums and and things, uh, always comment that it was very difficult to get anime because if you didn't know somebody, it, there was really no way to get anime, right? You know, um, you know the the connections, the uh, you know, the, 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 the basically, uh, if you basically had to know somebody in order to get to, you know, you get in, to be in the know, right? So it's, it's, it's a, or a friend of a friend of a friend type of thing, right? Um, in some ways, okay? Uh, in other ways, if you manage to get uh, your, your, your hands on a source, a, uh, a lead, okay, um, then it continues, okay? So basically, in this episode, I want to go through some fan mail, and I want to outline some of the ways that people would have gotten in touch with me um, by just the way they wrote their letters, okay? And so uh, I'm going to go through the different examples and show you not only just the various different types of mails I've gotten, but then you can also see where the source of their information is. Because obviously, you know, um, we, you know, there is no kind of, quote, internet, uh, you know, website, as it were, right? Because even things like GeoCities and that kind of stuff wasn't invented at this time. Um, you know, there are, uh, you know, you know, the standard, like, you know, you know poster and uh, flyer type of a distribution, but that only works around Vancouver, right? For use, that's usually used for our, uh, Vancouver club meetings and that kind of stuff, uh, uh, you know, around here. Um, but what happens to people who are just, you know, in the middle of nowhere in, you know, uh, Wisconsin or something like that, or Utah, um, you know, how would you know? Uh, the, the, where to get your anime from. And uh, so we're going to go through some of the examples here of uh, some people that in the past uh, and how they've managed to get anime. All right? So, without further delay, let's look at some fan mail. Okay, so the first letter I got here is from a, a Gregory Barty from New York. 
and he writes that uh, I got your address from the anime Hashin, okay? And so anime Hashin is a um, uh, fan club uh, that uh, you has a newsletter called The Rose. And the Rose, um, you know, you know, has basically articles of various different things, but it also has uh, what essentially the equivalent of a classifieds. And I was able to, you know, um, uh, talk to uh, I think it was Lorraine Savage at the time, and uh, they, you know, put my information uh, for the uh, uh, fans of stuff in their magazine. And then so people who managed to get a copy of this thing from their new, you know, from their uh, club and that kind of stuff. Uh, or the members of the uh, anime Hashin, um, you know, they get this newsletter, and then with this newsletter, they can then find out more people, uh, not just in their club, but you know, all across uh, you know North America, um, where they can get anime. Okay, and so this guy obviously got, you know got that information, and then basically wrote me a letter uh, asking about uh, some Pat Labor episodes. Okay, the next letter is from a uh, David Alday. Uh, Alday. Um, and he's from Houston, Texas, and he writes, uh, I'd like to get to know how to get a subtitled Orange Road episodes. I found about you uh, from the Kimagura Orange Roadies, okay? So Kimagura Orange Roadies is a fan registry newsletter or club, okay? It was initially started by uh, Peter Payne and uh, was taken over by uh, Kevin Quinn. And basically, it basically is for fans of Orange Road. And it basically has its own, you know, registered membership uh, thing. And they get the, uh, you know, these uh, the ne- newsletters, which contains information about Orange Road and that kind of stuff. And again, they were uh, uh, you know, gracious enough to post um, my information on there because, you know, at this time, I'm the only person who had subtitled all of Orange Road. And everybody who like, likes that series and whatnot knew that I was the guy to go to to get the stuff. So again, uh, lots of big names as you, uh, you know, uh, and whatnot are on the list um, uh, in, in the, the, this newsletter because it said uh, they were one of the beginnings of, um, uh, you know, the, the major cons and that kind of stuff and all the, the, the California influence uh, because, again, a lot of people, you know, getting into this thing called anime and uh, a lot of people got into it because of Orange Road. So again, uh, you know, this, that's another way uh, that people found out about me through these fanzines all right the next one is from a donald wakefield uh, he is the uh vice president of the anime club nova out of portland oregon and uh he writes uh basically um that uh you know he's uh you know got the info sheet that i sent him about uh you know the latest uh, listings and, and instructions about how to get an- anime and of course uh he goes and fires off a tape for uh the fail theory um, first OEVA, uh, let's see, first couple episodes, the next episodes of the Red Riding Hood Cha-Cha, and the second ta- uh, uh, tape of Miracle Girls, and again, this really works out really well, because, you know, again, when you have an anime club, then this is, like, new material that you can put into your meetings, uh, that will draw new people in, because that, you know, at this time, you know, there is no, um, you know, anime that's coming out that, that is of this nature, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, is being released yet, right? I mean, even Phil Fury, um, when it first came out, uh, you know, we still had probably about a two to three year head start on, uh, people like Biz and that kind of stuff. So, you know, this movie, you know, just came out, you see it in the magazines and that kind of stuff. Um, but the U.S. version won't come out for, you know, still several years from now. So this is, you know, their ability to kind of really capture that, um, you know, that hidden market, uh, where they you know they they can get members and uh, and people into the anime clubs and that kind of stuff because you aren't going to find it on the shelf of um, you know blockbusters or um, you know Suncoast Video or anything like that um, you know there's you know anime clubs were the way to go. Okay, the next one is from a Norm Yama Yamane. Uh, which actually sounds like a Japanese name, uh, but he's uh, out of uh, Ottawa, Ontario. Okay, and he writes, uh, I read, I read in uh, Portal Culture Addicts number fifteen about your subtitled anime, and I'm interested. And so, even a person that's Japanese was also interested in, uh, you know, fan subs and that kind of stuff. Uh, and again, uh, I have to thank, uh, you know, um, uh, the, those uh, editors and that kind of stuff at uh, uh, Portal Culture Addicts. 
uh, to for you know, printing my information again in their magazine. Now their magazine was one of the ones that you know actually got sold in comic book stores and and um, you know and was you know printed you know in mass form. Um, so that again, a lot of people you know were able to get information about anime and that kind of stuff. And then if they were able to look at the back and resources that are, that is in the magazine, you know they can go out further. Like the, for example, Norm here. Uh, a lot more anime that that, that, that was those, that was avail- more than what was available at the time, yeah, for sure, right? Because then, yeah, now he can uh, you know get get a list of all the different various different things, and I was able to then send him, uh, you know, a lots of new stuff. Okay, the next one is uh, from a Philip Yee uh, out of uh, Berkeley, California, and he writes that uh, I read uh, in a recent issue of Protoculture Addicts issue thirteen. Uh, that uh, the uh, newsletter uh, issue five, so that's the one that we uh, made for our uh, members now, because has the entire translation of Pat Labor the movie, and uh, so this person is you know is interested uh, uh, in basically uh, um, you know starting an animation club. I am the uh, I'm going to be the president of my high school's Japanese animation club. Um, the BHS Anime, which is Berkeley High School Anime Club, and I'm planning to show Pat Labor the movie. So I heard that I need the translation for that, and plus any trans- subtitle stuff would be appreciated, including Maze Nakaku. So again, at this time, uh, we had uh, you know done all, all Maze Nakaku, Pat Labor, um, the the TV series, and the movie were the next projects that we did, um, and again, uh, you know, he realizes that uh, you know this kind of information. For an anime club is super valuable, and uh, and you know very very popular. So again, um, you know I probably sent him a copy of the newsletter, if not uh, even sent him a copy of uh, of uh, Pat Labor uh, the movie, so he can show it at the uh, at his uh, high school meeting. So uh, very very reminiscent of uh, that episode of the OC where you know S- uh, Steph was trying to you know start a comic book club at his high school, and and you know all the nerds and that kind of stuff uh, kind of stayed. Well, there was, no, there was no members except for like two people who wanted to join this club, uh, you know. But uh, you know that, that gives you an idea of, of the fact that you know even small places like uh, high schools and colleges and that kind of stuff um, will start anime clubs up just so that they are, uh, you know they, they can get you know people that are sort of interested in their sort of you know new genre called anime, um, you know to get new stuff and whatnot to show to them and uh, you know and uh, you know, get basically just you know sort of share the wealth, you know, kind of thing, as it were. And so by reaching out, uh, he is able to get uh, some new stuff uh, into his club. The next one is from an Antonio Anderade, and he's out of uh, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And again, he's uh, you know I read about your club in the Protoculture Addicts, uh, same magazine, and he's interested in uh, the Dirty Pair, Golf Force, and Orange Road. And again, these are all very the, the t- various titles that we did for early, early in our um, something career, and basically, uh, you know, they ask information about how to get them. You know, some usually uh, find the catalog, uh, and also maybe find um, the uh, you know the, the uh, instructions on how to get tapes and that kind of stuff. So, again, from Rhode Island. Okay, so the next letter is r- rather an interesting one. Uh, it is uh, from the uh, Robotech Resistance. Okay, now this is an interesting, really interesting one because um, yeah, it's kind of funny. Uh, Greetings, I'm sorry it took so long to reply to this letter. I seem to have lost it. And until a few days ago, I probably would have already received my first tape I had if I had re- uh, replied right away. Anyway, I'm very interested in your offer. Um... Here is a little bit about myself. I first became interested in anime when I saw Robotech in 95. You know, a lot of us did, including myself. And ever since then, my love of anime has grown. I heard from a friend that Orange Road was good. So here's that friend of a friend thing I've been telling you about. I started looking for the info, and I found an article on it in the Anime Anonymous number 1 issue. After reading that, I looked through all the contact anime lists to see who I can get it from. And before I could, though... I got your letter. And I thought, this is great. I can get Orange Road and I have it subtitled so I can understand it. So, what had happened is, is that, you know, while he's learning about, you know, uh, Orange Road and this thing called anime, you know, he's doing the research and trying to, you know, branch out and go through fanzines and, you know, ask friend of a friend of a friend, that kind of thing. 
they try to find and, and you know find me and basically try to find information about how to get or well, something about Orange Road episodes. I'm doing the same thing. So I'm going around looking at fanzines and that kind of stuff. And anyone who had a, a you know a club or you know you know showed up on a CFO list or whatever, I was sending out letters to everybody as well. And apparently, my letter arrived to the Robotech Resistance about the same time he was looking for my contact information through the Anime Anonymous Number One. So uh, you know this is you know you know this is kind of a really funny story that sort of matched all together and it really worked out pretty well. So again, uh, we traded this and and again we. Uh, um, you know, uh, you got all this information, uh, you know, from to, to each other. It just, it's just just a little later on there it says, um, since you got my address from PA, which is Poor Culture Addicts, um, I thought you might like be, be a Robotech fan if you're interested in a copy. Just ask. Um, you know, the the movie is as bad as everyone says it is, but it is a collector's item. So he's referring to the fact that the the Robotech, um, uh, the movie. Which is like that kind of <laughs> weird, uh, you know, just totally uh, misabogulated version of, of like Macross with like, you know, Sentinels and all this stuff. It's just really, really horrible. But, oh, yeah, Megazone 23 as well. And it was just really, really horrible. Uh, an abomination of how, how editing and chopping of stuff uh, it worked. Um, and yes, it is the total bane of, of, of Robotech, um, you know, enthusiasts. But uh, yeah, so even then, they, you know, they had a version of it back then. Um, but yeah, so this is a kind of a fun story where, again, it's the process of using, you know, contacts and these fanzines and uh, just such, you know, limited information that we had to contact and mail, you know, information to each other that, you know, surprisingly enough, it's just, and, and especially in this case, you know, when I mailed out stuff, it sort of coincided with him trying to find information and mail out stuff. And it just, you know, it really worked out really well in, in this particular case. Okay, so another letter from uh, an, another, like, a fan club. Uh, this is from Ray Barker uh, out of Memphis, uh, Tennessee. Okay. And he's basically the, you know, the, the person who runs um, the uh, FAST Buffalo. Okay, so on behalf of FAST Buffalo Anime Frontier, uh, I'd like to congratulate uh, your fine efforts on the subtitling of or the Orange Road series. For the past two months, your uh, Orange Road series has been featured in our monthly meetings and has been an overwhelming positive response. Okay, and um, you know, then he continues on about the, the fact that, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the fact that uh, we had to put, um, you know, do not, um, uh, you know, you know, do not, uh, you know, pay for this uh, video. Uh, this is a, you know, uh, you know, f uh, f for fans, uh, you know, free subtitle that type of thing, right? Because as I said, you know, it's very possible that these these tapes could be, uh, you know, copied and bootlegged and sold at conventions, right? So we wrote uh, things like. Um, uh, let's see, your subtitles didn't pertain to Android, but the video pirates and Amiga frustrations both send clear mes uh, send a clear message. Fans learn that the non-profit fandom anti-pirate message, and at the same time, the much better appreciation of the end product. I believe I know where you're coming from. I've edited several issues of our group's fanzine, and people seem to prefer bitching about typos than congratulating either product or effort. So therefore. Please allow me to break this unfortunate trend and congratulate your obvious hard work and efforts. And that's usually what happens, right? People just, just, you know, they'll complain about, you know, typo mistakes and, and, and like small little grammar uh, things rather than realizing, you know, the whole of the effect of the, you know, you know, the, you know, uh, the, whether well, the typo is only on one sentence, but, you know, there's 22 minutes of, of translation that, you know, that, that, that you could get on a larger whole. Which is you know the the greater part of the project, right? Um, he just comes, you know, comments that I'm currently at, in Memphis, uh, and I appreciate sending you that address and you send that way I can send copies of what you give me to Buffalo, and so that's how you know even though he's based in Memphis, Tennessee, he is actually uh, contributing to the Buffalo Anime Club, okay? And uh, yeah, so so this is really, really really important and it's really nice to know that. That uh, you know, you know, people do understand and people do appreciate the fact that you know a lot of work has been done and a lot of uh, you know painstaking effort uh, to both translate and to subtitle these things. 
Uh, and again, a lot of people do appreciate that, 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 you know, for a series like Orange Road, it was really, really good. Now, the last layer I have for this episode, and I thank you for, uh, you know, staying this long to, uh, you know, we'll go through these, uh, these letters because I'm sure you'll find it really, really fascinating, all these different things. So I saved the best one for last. Uh, this is from a Jerry Bouchard, uh, from Morgantown, uh, Western Virginia. Okay. And he writes... Uh, I've heard of your work on the Anime L talk list. Okay, that's I guess that's an internet re- interrelay chat. Um, I've seen one of your uh, group's uh, Orange Road tapes at the Anime Keken meeting in Pittsburgh. Note that name, Anime Keken and Pittsburgh. Remember that. I am very impressed. I'd like to get your copy of Pat Labor P1 tape and uh, shows all the information on that kind of stuff right, and whatnot. Now, Remember I told you to pay attention to the anime Keken in Pittsburgh? Well, in the previous episode, you remember I was talking about people bitching about co- translation of a Mason Akaku song going back to a um, uh, email, uh, mail message uh, from the Bix Animation Conference uh, b- you know, uh, BBS thing. And uh, he writes, back when the only people translating non-science fiction fan anime was the Vancouver's own Prince of Darkness, thank you very much, uh, William Chow of the Arctic Animation in Maison Akaku was the most anticipated part of any shipment of tapes to the Quest Labs of State College, I think. I bought a tape or two back from them uh, uh, from one of the monthly marathon copying sessions at Lawrence Library Basement, the uh, old, uh, old line fan club in Pittsburgh anime, the anime Keken. And almost everybody at PSSFS loved it, even though we didn't have a science fiction or fantasy elements like uh, Kimiko Orange Road. So, you know, here we are, you know, someone that's uh, you know, cause commenting that, you know, you know, even though they, you know, they, you know, they had a beef with, you know, the, shall we say, as in the next line here, the translations of Arctic animations were famously haphazard and erratic. And in co- quoting, Cry Rusted Clock became... Uh, PSSFF's shorthand for Maison Akaku due to the typically wacky translation of the first opening uh, animation song for that theme, right? Um, and I'm just going, you know, you know, you know, as, as much as you guys are like, like, like you know, as a bitchy complaint about just like like a line out of a song translation, right? Yet other people, you know, see through this and going. You know, we don't care. We want the rest of the show. Orange Road was a good show. Maison Akaka was a good show. Didn't say anything about, you know, you know the, the fact that, uh, you know, th- they wanted the entire series. Obviously, it was very, very popular because, you know, whenever they get a tape, uh, you know, you know, you know that, that gets sent in, especially from one of these guys, um, you know, they immediately put it into like a, this this line taping, as as they refer to, is basically when people come to the you know to the, to their club meetings every month, and they'll line up, you know, they'll bring a VCR with them, and then they'll basically tag line it onto this chain of VCRs. So basically, one master VCR will play the the the, the club's tape, right? Uh, you know, let's just say Mason Okaku, for example. And then every member has like you know their VCR tagged to the output of this VCR, right? Split or you know using a splitter or 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 just you know daisy chain from one VCR to the next VCR to the next VCR to the next VCR type of thing, you know. And then so you'll end up with like you know two, three, four, five VCRs all lined up together, so everyone can get their copy of this tape, right? Um, and they run that while they're you know, watching videos on that kind of stuff during their meeting, right? So. They can go ahead and do this kind of stuff and, you know, and comment, but, you know, you know, and, you know, publicly, you know, you know, bitch and complain about, like, literally one line out of a song. Yet, they'll say, yeah, screw it. No, we still want the tape. We still want to watch the entire series. We still love Orange Road. We still love Mason Akaku. Keep sending us tapes. You know, uh, you know, it's just very, very, it's very, very ironic and, and very, very, um, you know, the amount of hypocrisy that goes on, you know, saying one thing. Uh, out of one mouth, but you know, you know, it's, you know, a totally different action is going through the other end. You know, it's just it's just rather hilarious. But this is the kind of stuff that I got, you know, the, you know, flamed for. Uh, yet, you know, I always think, you know, actions always speak better than words. So, all 
All right, I hope you found that very interesting, and uh, basically I will have more episodes with more content and more reflections of basically um, you know what these fan mails uh, you know reveal about the the history of uh, anime and how they you know occurred. And basically, I've covered a lot of these topics. Now it's just uh, it's refreshing, to, and, and you can see for yourself uh, in the mail and the things that that, that, that uh, other people have commented about. Um, you know, basically re just reinforces, um, you know, what I've been trying to tell you guys and trying to illustrate to you this environment. So this hopefully, uh, f you know, fills it out better, you know, basically gives you that, um, you know, that uh, a better picture, I guess you can say, you know, of what it would be like to be an anime fan uh, back in the 90s when we were just getting this anime thing started, all right? So again, don't forget to go down below, click like and subscribe for that. Because there will be more, alright? So, until next time, I will see you again.